Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to be talking about blood pressure. And yes, I'm sitting in our, it's coming along people, our rec room that we've been working on for a while. And it used to be my former ballet and martial arts studio. And eventually I will be doing a full tour of it, but it's been coming along nicely. We actually had a couple of family game nights in here and just had a great time. It's been a really great way for us to take this room and refocus it into something that's gonna benefit not just us, but our whole family. So uh, including the extended family. So we've been having a lot of fun. Well, anyway, I've been putting this topic off for a while because though I know my thoughts and my feelings on it, there's, there's just so much about it when you're talking about health and being on medications and um, I know I'm going to miss a lot of really important facts. I did jot down some notes to help me remember to stay on track. But the first thing I do want to say is, number one, I am not a doctor. I'm not a licensed physician. I'm not a licensed nutritionist. I'm not licensed in anything. Um, the only thing I certificates I have are my black belt certificates. And, and so that's, and that's it. So everything that I've done is based on my own study and research and you know and this is years worth this isn't just getting you know to spending you know a couple hours looking stuff up this is constant years worth of observation and study and listening to different doctors and different natural paths and different people and um, and it's I started it on this way a long time ago because back in my 30s I think it was I really started just becoming more and more suspect of all the medications that we're on. And why are we giving kids antibiotics? Uh, you know, every time we turn around, every time they get the slightest fever, they're, they're being put on antibiotics. And so even when my kids were babies, I felt there was something wrong there. And so I didn't run my kids to the doctor for every little thing. And sometimes kind of felt like a bad parent because I did that, but amazingly they got better without the need of going to the doctor and being put on some kind of you know, drug. And by the way, um, this is just for educational purposes. And so don't allow anything I say to replace good professional medical counseling and note on good. And so, uh, you know, I don't, you know, a lot of you know, I don't trust most modern conventional doctors. I just don't, I don't trust the way they're trained. I'm sure there's many good ones out there as far as they're good people. They mean well, it's the training that they're given that I really don't trust. So going off of my own instinct and the fact that I, be, I believe personally that God created our bodies to be intelligent and self-healing, this is what I'm based on. And even if you're not a believer, you know, if you don't believe in God and creationism, if you're evolutionist, then as I say all the time, you should be able to believe that our bodies should be evolving to adapt to our, to our surroundings to nature and as well as nature adapting to us so that we should be able to be able to heal ourselves based on what is available to us in nature. And so anyway, let's talk a little bit about what blood pressure is and what it is not. High blood pressure, we're constantly told, is you know, it's the silent killer and, you know, it's, it needs to be medicated and it's, you know, it's, if your blood pressure is elevated, it's a bad thing. And yet this is coming from a poor understanding of the purpose of blood pressure and what it's for. Our blood pressure is made to rise and lower depending on our needs throughout the day even. And for each person, it's gonna be different. Blood pressure, as far as numbers go, systolic and diastolic, are never to be a one size fits all. Every person is going to be different and that one person is going to be different all throughout the day, your blood pressure is gonna do that. That is totally normal. So let's think about it. When you go to the doctor and they wanna check your blood pressure, what are you doing? You're sitting down. Do you want them to chest your blood pressure while you're going on a marathon or while you're lifting weights or while you're out hunting game or whatever it is. No, obviously you don't. You know why? Because your blood pressure naturally is going up to be able to get the blood pumping through the system as is needed. So here are the things that cause blood pressure elevation. That's going to be physical stress, 
emotional stress and chemical stress. Some of these can be good things and nothing wrong with them. But if you have a chronic high blood pressure that doesn't lower with some, you know, just sitting down, relaxing, doing some deep breathing or whatever, then it's possible you could have a problem. It's possible. But what is, what is that normal number? And here's the thing that's interesting to know. There is no evidence to support a set number, a, a healthy blood pressure number. So if you're told that yours is too low or too high, is it really? Is it for you? How do you feel? What is your activity level? What is your, what is your overall health? Because if you have poor health, it's very likely your blood pressure is going to be higher anyway as a result of poor health. The elevation of blood pressure is the body's natural defense and reaction to the situation that it is in. It is supposed to be self-regulating. So to be medicating a proper function in the body that is doing what it's supposed to do is really the wrong approach to it. Again, so if we're talking about it, it, if it actually is possible that your blood pressure numbers are higher than they should be, whatever that number really is, then what you need to look at is what kind of stressors are you under? Are you, do you have a poor diet? Is your blood in bad health? If you, poor blood requires more blood pressure to make it work properly in your body and to be able to push the right nutrients through your system. Are you currently under some emotional stress? You know, what about, what about your job? What is it doing to you? Are you dealing with any other life issues, a death in the family, a marriage, a new birth, whatever it is? These are normal, natural things that people deal with all the time and our blood pressure is meant to go up in order to properly handle those things. So we should not be trying to medicate those. Um, but if it's a chronic, a chronic stress, like a job situation that is chronically stressful and it's causing, it, it can cause serious health issues. Your blood pressure goes up in order to help counteract all that and so it's not the blood pressure that should be medicated it should be getting away from the situ situations that are causing high stress because the high stress will cause other health issues now other signs the reason why your blood pressure is up may be chronically elevated is because if you have other health issues it could be intestinal disorders it could be caused from thyroid problems. It could be simply caused from not drinking enough water. And again, as I said, an improper diet can cause your blood pressure to be chronically elevated. So I guess the thing is, is find out what, first of all, what do you think a normal blood pressure is for you personally? Here are some factors in this. Now it used to be back in the day, they considered normal blood pressure to be uh, 100, as, as far as talking about the top number, which I believe is a systolic, the top number being 100 points plus your age. So if you're 50 years old, it should be normal for that to be 150. That's not considered high if you're 50 years old. And now, you know, they keep changing the standards and that's part of the problem. They keep changing the standards with no evidence and they admit to they admit to not having any evidence to support any one set number for all people. So weight can also be a factor. Uh, whether you're a man or a woman can be a factor of the differences in your blood pressure. How tall you are can be a factor. And if you're on pharmaceuticals, that can be a big factor. So here's something that's interesting. We tend to find that uh, high blood pressure and uh, cholesterol issues go together. So if somebody's on high cholesterol medicine, they're most likely going to end up on high blood pressure medicine. Why is that? Because the statins, which I believe nobody should be on either, uh, are what is one of the factors in causing health problems that then increase the blood pressure. So first of all, you have to look past the idea that elevated blood pressure is a problem or a disease. What it is, it's, it's a fix for a problem. It's the body's natural way of regulating itself. Okay, so let's look at nature. When a, an antelope or some other kind of animal is being chased by a lion or a tiger, 
that creature who's being chased, their blood pressure is naturally going to go up. It needs to go up in order for it to run to save its life. Same thing goes with us. And so we don't go out there and start medicating all the antelope and all the rabbits and all the other animals that are most likely to be prey to the predators. Uh, that would just be silly and stupid. And yet you would find most of them have high blood pressure, especially when they're being chased. But we're not gonna, we're not gonna medicate them, that's dumb. And so we should not be medicating, I'm gonna say this over and over again, sorry if you get tired of hearing it, but we should not be medicating a body's natural function. It's, I, I really, and this is again, this is gonna be my opinion based on what I've learned, I honestly believe that nobody should be on blood pressure medication and that most people shouldn't even be worried about blood pressure because the focus is on the wrong place. You should be looking at what is causing your blood pressure to constantly be elevated or to be elevated to a very high point. Now coming back to blood pressure numbers, what are the numbers, I know I've got all these notes and I'm barely looking at them because I'm going off the top of my head and sometimes that's the best way for me to go, but I keep the notes to help keep me on track. But anyway, when it comes to numbers, the best thing to look at is what is your pulse pressure? What is that number? Now what that number is going to be is the difference between the systolic and the diastolic. So if your blood pressure, that, that number is gonna be roughly 40. That should be the difference. But it could be 50 or it could be 30, depending on who you are. It, to give a set number even on that is wrong because it's not going to be the same all the way across the board. But let's say it's 40. So that means we know that, you know, we hear 120 over 80 as being the normal blood pressure, though that's not good for all. Um, but what's the difference in those? It's 40. That sounds good. So wouldn't that then logically mean that somebody who has a 160 over 120 is also normal because the pulse pressure there is still only 40. And so that's going to be, those are the numbers you should look at the most, not what the actual systolic and diastolic numbers are, but what's the difference in those numbers. And even then it's still going to be tailored to you and who you are, your your genetics and all of this kind of stuff and, and, and whatever's going on in your life. And again, come back to what the root issue is of the problem. So, and here's something that's important to know. So these are some of the facts that I wrote down that I hope I wouldn't leave out. So high blood pressure does not cause kidney disease. What causes kidney disease is a is due to being on things like uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So that person gets put on this medication that then causes kidney failure or kidney problems or kidney disease, which then that is what's going to raise the blood pressure. So then they get put on the blood pressure medications. And it's not the blood pressure that's the disease. It actually goes back to the original medication that were, they were put on that caused other physical problems. So we keep trying to put the wrong fix on our problems. Okay, and then another thing about blood pressure medications is they actually increase the risk of stroke. So the more of this medication you're taking, the more the risk of stroke goes up. So let me see, I think I have a number on that here. So the risk of stroke, this is one thing I did take a note on because I want to get the number right, goes up by approximately 33% for each blood pressure medication that you are put on. Strokes are often blamed on high blood pressure when what it really is, is the medication that's causing the strokes not the high blood pressure itself. And then along with that, another interesting fact is when you have someone who's had a stroke, here is something that may just blow you away. So let's just say this person probably had a stroke because they were put on blood pressure medications in the first place. But then what do they do to a person who's had a stroke? They actually artificially elevate their blood pressure in order to keep blood flow going to the brain and keep the brain active and alive. So isn't that interesting? 
And so let's go back. If they were never put on the blood pressure medication in the first place, they probably wouldn't have had a stroke that then needed to be have their blood pressure artificially elevated. The, the whole system is just broken, people. It's just, you know, I can't, I can't say it enough. And so what I wanted to do next is I want to read off some of the foods and herbs that you can add to your diet that will help lower your blood pressure if it is chronically high. However, this is not a band-aid. This is not a fix to a problem. Again, I do not believe we should be actually trying to lower our blood pressure. I think we should be looking for the root of the problem. However, I decided it may be helpful anyway to go ahead and list these things off because this is called good healthy eating and good healthy eating is gonna help with all kinds of health problems and very likely help the health problems that are causing your blood pressure to be chronically high if it is actually too high. So I notice I keep saying if because those numbers are totally variable. So let me read off this list that I put together. So uh, I put arrows next to the ones that are the ones that are highest, and that's based on the nutrients that they have. And some of that is anything that's going to be high in magnesium and potassium, especially together. So uh, garlic, bananas, poppy seeds, cayenne pepper, uh, black seed, which I have black seed. It's some people call it the cure-all. I don't know about that, but it's a, you know, it might be a good thing to have on hand. It, I don't particularly like the flavor of black seed, but I mix them with a, um, fennel seed and sometimes we'll chew on that together and that helps the flavor a lot better because I like the taste of fennel seed. Um, also flax seed, olive oil, uh, celery, basil, ginger, oregano, lavender, cinnamon, hi and hibiscus tea. Now those, those are the ones that are at the top of the list. Now here are a few more I'm gonna throw in there. Lemons, raisins, currants, cantaloupe, winter squash, fenugreek seeds, honey, onions, watermelon seeds. So don't worry about swallowing those watermelon seeds, people. <laughs> in fact, you should probably chew them up. Uh, wild caught fish, which again is high, in, not only high in your omega threes, it's also high in magnesium. As I said in my uh, magnesium video, I'll link to that video right up here, by the way. So you want to look into magnesium rich foods. Check that video. And then one more that I have on the list here is green tea. And these are just a few examples of things that will help naturally lower your blood pressure and a lot of that is based on the fact that they of the minerals and the nutrients that they contain and again it just comes down to a good healthy diet and avoiding the things that are going to increase the stress within the body or cause digestive issues that increase the stress you don't want to lower your blood pressure you want to make your body healthy and that's what it really boils down to so again a lot of this is based on my own personal research don't take it as a replacement for professional medical counseling, but take it as incentive to start doing your own research into this topic and find and learn how to um, grow your own supplements, learn how to uh, just eat healthier and take better care of your body. You know, good a daily amount of movement. I don't even think a person has to necessarily, if they're just busy all day and they're working and they're on their feet, I don't think they necessarily have to set aside a specific time to exercise. I used to do it all the time, but being healthy and, and getting good exercise can simply be doing your chores, working in the garden, and working in the garden is incredibly good for you because it's, it's physical exercise, it's very relaxing, it's very good for your overall health, your physical and your emotional and your psychological health. And remember, when you get your hands in the soil, that, uh, that soil has enzymes in it that help your body release endorphins that gives you that really good that feel good feeling that's gonna lower your blood pressure. So there's some of the best ways to do it right there. And I also hope that this will help uh, get you looking into other things, you know, like your cholesterol, that's another big one. Your thyroid, do you need to be on thyroid medication? We were on it for for 15 years each, both me and Patrick, each on, we one was 
he was on Synthroid. I was on Levothyroxine, I think it's called. I, I, I always forget the name, whatever, whatever. Both of them were synthetic thyroids that were causing joint problems in both of us. And uh, after 15 years, I finally said, enough. And I weaned ourselves off of it. I have a video just on that right up here. Again, it's not telling you you should run out there and do it. I'm telling, we just share with you how we did it so you can look into it for yourself, just like I'm doing here. Just look into it for yourself. Don't just, don't just trust what I say. Oh, and one, uh, one more thing I wanted to, I meant to say this at the beginning of the video. I'm going to link to at least one of Dr. John Bergman's videos right here. I recommend you listen to every video he has on his channel about blood pressure every single one listen to him because he'll say something a little bit different in each one but if you keep hearing it you keep hearing it you'll be able to start realizing just how important this topic is and how we should not be <laughs> depending on a medical community that when a proper drug is given and let's say the proper drug taken at the right time in the right dosage is actually taking 128,000 lives per year. So, and that's doing it the way it's prescribed. Okay. So, and so you can just imagine the more people are dying from improper dosages, which I think in most cases is, it is all improper because we're all being, a lot of us are being put on drugs we shouldn't be on in the first place. Again, personal opinion, take it as it is. And I, again, I hope this really helps get you on the right path to finding full and total health. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching, take care, and God bless.